thought this cup was appropriate for this, uh, for this episode. Hello everybody, today we're gonna talk about something that I love very dearly, and that is animals. I asked you guys what you think we should talk about and someone suggested animals in space flight. So I started this research and I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be so fun. But to be honest, it's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already done so much research that I can't turn back now. So let's get started with the Back to Space weekly video. Let's start from the very top. In 1783, a rooster, a sheep, and a duck, I promise this isn't the start of a really lame joke, were sent up in a newly invented hot air balloon. The Montgolfier brothers pioneered the hot air balloon as we know it, and on September 19th, 1783, they exhibited their new flying balloons with some friends. The first animal in outer space, believe it or not, were fruit flies. What? Random. The United States launched them in a captured Nazi V-2 rocket on February 20th, 1947. They were trying to study radiation exposure at high altitudes. They reached an altitude of 68 miles and were recovered alive by parachute. That is a very funny mental image. Because there was so little known about the physiological effects of space flight, especially concerns that astronauts' cardiovascular system would fail in microgravity, causing instant death, scientists decided to send some relatively large animals into space to see how it went with them. Some of these monkeys were trained to push levers within five seconds of seeing a flashing blue light. The failure to do so would result in an application of a light electric shock on the soles of his feet, while a correct response would earn him a banana pellet. So that's how they trained, and let's talk about the actual primates. The first primate is Albert. Albert Aresis macaque rode on a V2 rocket on July 11th, 1948. Unfortunately, Albert died of suffocation during the flight. And on June 14th, 1949, almost an exact year later, Albert was followed by Albert II. And he was the first monkey in outer space. He reached an altitude of 83 miles, but unfortunately, he died on impact when the parachute failed. Albert III, a crab-eating macaque, launched on a V2 rocket on September 16th, 1949. He died at 35,000 feet in an explosion, and this is actually a direct quote, turning him into a fine red mist. Oh my God, this is horrible. I'll never put you in space. I'll never put you in space. <laughs> Anyways, they kept going with the Alberts, so Albert four and five died by parachute failures. Come on, guys, let's get it together. Four of the Alberts. Albert six, known as Yorick, survived his flight in 1951, though it toppled out at an altitude significantly below the generally accepted boundary demarcating outer space. So Yorick is living his best life. He comes back from space, but then he died several hours after the landing, and they think that this is because of the heat stress suffered as he sat inside his cramped capsule in the New Mexico sun, waiting for the recovery crew. Oh, this enrages me. I love animals, and this is a very difficult story, and it's a horrible mental image. <sighs> Moving on, the United States recorded a milestone in May 1959, finally recovering two primates alive after a space flight. A rhesus monkey named Abel and a squirrel monkey named Baker reached an altitude of 300 miles aboard a Jupiter rocket and were retrieved unharmed. Sadly, Abel died several days later during an operation to remove an electrode from under her skin. Ah! I just want it to be a happy ending, but it seems like it's not possible. Okay, so now they're getting kind of comfortable with space flight and hopefully parachutes. <clears throat> so they start experimenting with chimpanzees whose anatomy is closer to humans. So on January 31st, 1961, the US launched Ham on a suborbital space flight. He reached the altitude of 157 miles during a 16.5 minute flight and was recovered unharmed. <laughs> Yay, ham! Then after that, Alan Shepard successfully blasted off on his suborbital flight on May 5th, 1961, becoming the first American and second human to reach space. For you space nerds out there, he was testing the Mercury capsule. Oh, and there's not a ton of info about this during the time, but just know that during the 50s, they were also launching mice into space on a V2 rocket as well. A total of 32 monkeys have been flown into space, including rhesus macaques, cinnamulgus monkeys, squirrel monkeys, and pigtailed monkeys. Chimpanzees have also flown as we just discussed. So we're gonna jump a little bit back in time because we were talking about monkeys in America, but let's move over to the Soviet Union and see what experiments they were working with. First off, I looked into the training because yes, they were trained, they were champions, they were space dogs, and they were confined into small boxes for 15 to 20 days at a time. Can you believe that? 
Stray dogs were chosen because scientists felt that they would be able to tolerate the rigorous and extreme stress of spaceflight better than fancy house dogs. Female dogs were used because of their temperament and because the suit the dogs wore in order to collect urine and feces. They were expected to wear these spacesuits for a long period of time, ride in centrifuges, and simulate the high acceleration of the rocket launch that they kept putting them in a progressively smaller cage. <laughs> You're kind. You're kind. I had to go through that and die. Okay, so that's just the training. Let's talk about the actual launches. On July 22nd, 1951, the Soviet Union launched an R1 3A1 flight, carrying the dogs Saigon and Desik into space, but not into orbit. These two dogs were the first living higher organisms successfully recovered from the space flight. Both dogs survived the flight. Yes. Although one would end up dying a year later in a different flight. <sighs> okay. Then on November 3rd, 1957, the Soviet Union shocked the entire world by launching Sputnik 2. We all know that. But what you probably didn't know is on board the small satellite was a little dog named Laika who was the first animal to orbit Earth. Let me tell you a little bit about Laika. She, yes, she's a she, was a stray from the streets of Moscow. She was then selected to be the occupant of the space satellite program. This was, of course, just like America, was aimed to try and understand the effects of microgravity and so on. Laika died during the flight, which was intended. Oh my God. Laika, your name is Maya, it's somewhat similar because the technology to return from orbit had not yet been developed. So at least none of the 10 dogs were launched into orbit and numerous other on suborbital flights before the historic date of April 12th, 1961, when Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. In 2008, Russian officials unveiled a monument to Laika. Okay, that's nice. Um, and all, but this is so sad. So then Belka and Strelka spent a day in space aboard the Sputnik 5 on August 19th, 1960 before returning to Earth, and they were accompanied by a great rabbit, 42 mice, two rats, flies, and several plants and fungi. Guys, everyone survived, and then we move on, and it's Veterok and Yugolia, who launched on February 22nd, 1966, aboard a Cosmos 110 and spent 21 days in orbit before landing on March 16th. The space flight of record-breaking duration was not surpassed by humans until the flight of Skylab 2 in 1974 and still stands by the longest space flight by dogs. Two years later, the Zond 5 became the second spacecraft to travel to and circle the moon. It carries the first terrestrial organisms to the vicinity of the moon, including, shockingly, two tortoises, fruit fly eggs, and plants. The tortoise underwent biological changes during the flight, but it was concluded that the changes were primarily due to starvation and little to do with space travel. Little note here, 12 days before the launch, the tortoises were secured in the vehicle, deprived of food and water. This was a part of pathomorphic Morphological and histochemical experimenting. Other countries were trying to test their space jam out too. The French launched the first cat into space on October 18th, 1963. Felicette had electrodes implanted in her skin to transmit her condition. She reached an altitude of 100 miles and landed safely. China also launched mice, rats, and dogs between 1964 and 1966. In the late 1960s, NASA launched a series of biosatellites carrying insects, frog eggs, microorganisms, and plants. The third and final biosatellite carried a pigtailed monkey and it died after landing from a heart attack. We're gonna make it through this episode, I promise. <laughs> All of these experiments were trying to get us humans comfortable with spaceflight. Let me just list out these experiments. On November 9th, 1972, bullfrogs were launched in a one-way mission to learn more about space motion sickness. On July 28th, 1973, two garden spiders named Arabella and Anita were used to study how orbiting Earth would impact spiders' ability to spin webs. Arabella spun a fairly symmetrical web even though the thread thickness varied, something that Earth-bound spiders don't experience. On July 10, 1985, 10 newts flew on board the Bion 7. Their front limbs were amputated in order to study regeneration in space to better understand how humans might recover from space injuries. Oh my god, this is like some crazy Nazi experiment stuff. In April 17th, 1998, more than 2,000 creatures joined in 16 days of neurological testing alongside the seven-member human crew of the shuttle Columbia. 
In September 2007, microscopic creatures commonly known as water bearers, tardigrades, survived a 10-day exposure to open space. The creatures are known to have the ability to withstand extreme conditions, including dehydration, and still recover and reproduce. The animals were dried out and rehydrated after surviving cosmic rays and near vacuum and freezing temperatures. I'm sorry, your kind had to be subjected to this. I'm sorry. I am a animal person, so all of this is very, very rough to read, especially the images where the dogs are just so happy and they don't know that they're gonna be in a, uh, going to space. Uh, so anyways, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and leave a comment about your perspective. I know you went to space and it wasn't scary, but you did that because of all the other dogs. Was this okay? Was it okay to put little baby monkeys and dogs in space just so we could go to space as humans and look for the forward of the space exploration? Where are the statues of, of the monkeys, huh? That's what I want to know. Where is the Albert one, two, three, and four statues? And five, where are they, huh? Tell me the secrets of space. Okay. Before we leave, we're gonna do the giveaway from two weeks ago, which is a book by my dear friend, Alan Ladwig. So, and the winner is... MX. You won MX. Go ahead and send an email to info at backtospace.com. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. All right, guys. Tell me what you guys think. Leave a comment, subscribe. Mainly our videos are not this depressing, but I want you guys to all know it's my duty as a journalist to report these things. See you guys next week. No, no, don't run away from me. I'm trying to love you. Hi.